All right, I have to remember, it's uh, triangles holding hands, triangles angry at each other, and triangles doing butt stuff to each other. Okay, okay, is that, is that the code? Is that the code to get in that stash? I don't know why I didn't realize that's what it was trying to tell me to do before. I think I spent like 15 minutes trying to figure out that code before. Okay. Um, hope this is it. Okay, triangles holding hands, triangles angry at each other, facing away, and triangles, and triangles doing butt stuff. Okay. Monsters live in the woods. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I can't pick up any of this because I don't have the space. All right. Well, at least, at least I can do it on the case board. Uh, Bright Falls lunchbox. Oh, there's just one more. There's just one more. But where? But where? Uh, cold stashes. And Bright Falls area. And oh, there's just one more here too. <laughs> uh, so I see Fork Knife has Stranger Things stuff coming soon. Already out in the shop. It is? Oh, oh, that's interesting. Like, is it is it good stuff? Cause Wait, I walked past it four times. Um I walked past what four times? Locked door. Um is this a maybe maybe I go back to that point of interest. Okay. I don't like the game, but they do that right. Putting out stuff that seems cool. You know, No Nito, for the longest time, that is what I said about Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite was the fact that... So when I first played Fortnite when it came out, I was just like, I don't get this game. I do not understand it. Or I don't understand what people are seeing into it. But I would... And I just didn't play it for years. But I was constantly seeing the updates and the guest characters and crossover events that they were doing and I'm like that's so cool I wish I cared about this game because it seems like everything that they're doing is awesome I just don't like the game maybe I should just stay here for the night and make sure no harm comes to my creation I'm sure it'll be fine what do you know you're just an apprentice you have no idea the pressures a professional like me is under well, all right then. Um, but thankfully, like I said, they uh, created the no-build mode of Fort Fortnite, and now I enjoy the game. Hey, how you doing? But I will also say, uh, this week, with their going back to the original map, uh, the map that they had when the game first came out, I'm recognizing a lot of the things that I saw and I played when, well, when the game first came out, and I remember why I didn't like the game. Because the original map is not very good. There's nothing there. Just darkness. Are you talking about my heart, sir? Don't talk about my heart like that. It's empty. There's nothing there. Yeah. Just darkness. Hey, you two. Uh, I think you may be right. Might have been a mistake to come here. I don't think Marcy's coming back. Fuck, Riley. This is so messed up. I know. I'm sorry. Hey, it's not your fault. We all knew what we were signing up for. Uh, wait, you did sign a waiver, right? You signed the waiver about, you know, this isn't my fault if anything happens, right? Uh, I think you may be right. All right, the dialogue likes to repeat I itself. To come here. Right, in this area. I don't think Marcy's coming back. Okay, I don't care. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Fortnite 2. Also, I was in a stream and someone was in there saying Alan Wake 2 was boring and not to play it. I thought Man Brock would have something to say about that. Well, here's the, here's the thing. Um, Alan Wake 2 is boring if you want a lot of action in your games. It kind of goes to... I mean, I would compare Alan Wake 2... Here's a strange comparison. 
I would compare my playthrough to Alan Wake 2 versus my uh, playthrough of uh, Spider-Man 2. Because I was constantly saying in Spider-Man 2 how, you know, the, I love the original Spider-Man game because it was just combat and traversal, moving around web slinging. And all of the um, challenges, all the collectibles, all the side missions... What did they have you do during those moments? It was traversal and combat. The two things that were great about the game. So all I was doing is having fun playing the game. Because the two things I loved about it is what it was constantly doing throughout the entire game. So in Alan Wake, the original, I really like the story, the narrative, what's happening. But even I would say... The combat isn't great. However, a lot of us would make an excuse that, well, it's okay that it's not great because the game came out in 2010 and it was a brand new game and we'll see what they do in the sequel and see if they change anything. Well, here's the sequel. The combat has been changed a little, but the combat is pretty similar to the first game. So a lot of people, myself included, find the combat a little boring. However, I'm not playing Alan Wake 2 for the combat. I'm playing Alan Wake 2 for the narrative and that story. The thing that I really, really loved from the first game. That is where I'm getting my enjoyment from Alan Wake 2. I love the story and the just the kooky dialogue and characters and things like that. It's the difference between... Um, Here's another weird comparison. It's the difference between the Star Wars TV show Andor and Ahsoka. Uh, I admit I haven't watched Andor because, you know, Star Wars is dead to me. Um, but everybody that I know say that, like, Andor is a really, really, really good show. Which takes place in the Star Wars universe, but it doesn't really feel feel like a Star Wars show. It feels like this was a script or a, uh, a show that was written to be something else, and then they just threw a Star Wars slap of, ta uh, slap of paint on it. So, it's still really, really good, but people who are accustomed and used to Star Wars tasting like a particular flavor could find it very, very boring and not entertained. First is Ahsoka, which is just dripping in Star Wars, and but not a a good show. It doesn't have good writing. It's it's junk food versus fine dining. It's caviar, which is disgusting, but has like high pristine value because of the um, how rare it is, how difficult it is to get, and that is the reason why caviar is considered a delicacy, just because of the difficulty of getting it, versus a Big Mac. So, I think there's a lot of people who are playing Alan Wake 2 and say, this is boring. It's because they want a Big Mac. They want simple, fast food. They want to enjoy their meal. And they just want something that they're comfortable and accustomed to and used to. Versus, again, people like me who, once again, I, I've never had caviar. Caviar sounds absolutely disgusting. But Alan Wake 2 is something that I don't get in video games these days. There isn't, like, Remedy is the only company that sh put, starts a, puts a musical uh, number in their games. Uh, big, spectacular, like, levels. Like the We Sing level here. Or the, um, the, uh, what's it, Ast the Ashtray Maze in Control. Um, it's so different, I find it incredibly refreshing and I enjoy it. Um, yeah, story over gameplay, no deal. Absolutely. So, if you come into Alan Wake expecting, like, really, really, really good I gameplay, this. yeah, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you're here for story and more of a um, detective uh, gameplay mechanic, you're going to have a good time. I mean, another way to look at it is somebody who plays um, the Burnout series and Gran Turismo and um, all those like super high uh, hardcore racing games saying, I'll tell you what one of the worst games I've ever played is, Truck Simulator. Truck Driver Simulator is so awful. 
I mean, when you compare it to Gran Turismo, it's just the stupidest. Why does anybody ever play this? I'm like, why would you compare those? <laughs> there, you, it, it sounds like you were looking for something drastically different than what this was preparing you for, presenting uh, you with. Um, just because both games use cars, use vehicles, they should not be even compared to one another. So whenever, if I hear somebody say, Alan Wake is stupid, Alan Wake's 2 is stupid, and the gameplay is stupid, and you should never play it, all I hear is, I like this type of video game. Alan Wake was not this type of video game, therefore, Alan Wake is bad. It's a very easy, um, very easy complaint, a complaint to just ignore. Alright, can I go back to... Alan now? Let's see. Well, I think, uh, Rod, they should listen to some criticism. Because I admit, like, Alan Wake 2 is not perfect. I'm having a grand old time with this game, but this game is not perfect. There are a lot of changes that I would make to it. Like, um, a quote-unquote, uh, controversy... Not see, I have to progress Saga's story? Dang it. Alright, so I still have to do more stuff with Saga. So, a quote-unquote controversy with Alan Wake 2, which I was not aware of, was, um, people were saying that they, um, I'll wait for it to get a little quieter. A little quiet. Quiet. Get quieter. Quiet. Quiet. Okay. But anyway, so, Something that I was not aware of, but I kept on hearing people talk about online, was the fact that they race-swapped Saga here. And I was confused when I heard that, because I'm like, race-swapped Saga? But that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, Saga wasn't in the first Alan Wake. She wasn't in control. So I looked it up online, and I'm like, original Saga. And come to find out, it was, um, I guess, on like the Remedy Twitter, or Alan Wake Twitter uh, feed or something like that. They were doing like these little teases for what was coming up in Alan Wake 2. And they were like two FBI agents, blah, blah, blah. And they had actors. It, they were all filmed in live action. So, um, oh, you have, you have new dialogue? Nothing left for us here anymore. Uh, agreed. Are you sure? Well, who knows? Maybe she'll come and haunt us be heading out. I oh, so. Okay, the dialogue... The, okay, you guys are having trouble with your dialogue. Okay. So anyway, they had real-life actors playing the parts of the FBI agents in these little, like, teases for Alan Wake 2. And you had the guy who plays um, the FBI agent, Casey. And you also had this... I'm assuming Norwegian, Finnish, blonde, white girl playing Saga. Agent Saga. And so everybody who was like a big fan of the game of, of the game and keeping track of where it was going, uh, when they started showing gameplay trailers, they're like, and here's Agent Saga. They were like, uh, that's not Saga. That's not that, that's not the, the girl or the actress that you were showing in these teases and previews or whatever of what the game is going to be. So of course everybody was saying, like, hey, they race swapped Saga. And I mean, technically, that's true. I do have, like, there's there's two... I'm of two minds of it. Um, one, for the simple fact that people like me had no idea those previews even existed, I, I can't say they race swap Saga because I had no pre... Uh, idea, uh, predetermination of what Saga was supposed to look like. So, for me, it, it didn't mean anything. And I think that is something that's a reality about a lot of businesses, uh, movies, television shows, books, or anything like that, which is if it's, it, again, going back to Star Wars, if there's something written in a Star Wars book and the book is supposed to be canon and then a Star Wars TV show or a Star Wars movie comes out and it completely contradicts what the book says, uh, a lot of like Star Wars fans will say, hey, that's not supposed to happen because in this book that it happened a different way, most of the people behind Star Wars or the powers that be behind a control of a, uh, intellectual property will just go, nobody read that book. 
okay, so we changed it, and it, it doesn't matter, because nobody read that book. So we can, we're just ignoring it. That's the why, that's the reason why the, the like, the whole race swap, a swap portion of Saga, one of the reasons why they can do that. Because nobody, not a lot of people saw those commercials, so they did it for the sake of doing it, or to get their ESG score up, or whatever. Um, but they, the people who are complaining do have a point of like, hey, why did you do this? You already had an actress. You already had somebody playing this part. So why did you get rid of them just to put this woman in here? And I'm not going to have a problem with it if... For, there's two ways. There's two ways that this can work. One, if we are introduced to Saga's father and it's somebody like Mr. Door uh, or just another just another black man or just something if we get introduced to saga's parents and they're both white i'm gonna take umbrage with saga's perplexion in this game because she's supposed to be norwegian finnish and if both her parents are white i'm really gonna question how in the world this happened unless they say like she's adopted or something like that or two going back to what i said before about um, her daughter, Casey, and everybody like that. Um, what What if Saga is not from this town? What if uh, Tor isn't her grandfather? What if her mother didn't ever come to this town? And she is just a random FBI agent who came to this town to do a case, and the story is writing her in to have a history in the town, and blah, 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 blah. And even though it doesn't make any sense... Uh, while why this is the way it is, it's just Alan Wake is just writing her into the story. And once they leave the town, they're just like, oh, no, I'm not their granddaughter. I'm not their daughter. My name is Saga Anderson, but I'm not related to any of these people. And if that's one of the reasons why they actually got rid of the original um, actress and race-swapped Saga, there is a narrative reason why they did that to say like no no like clearly she isn't related to any of these people she's never been to this town before and we want that to be apparent as you're playing the game uh i think that would actually be a really clever way a really interesting thing for them to do but again i don't know if they're willing to do i don't know if they're going to do that i think it's going to be just that Oh yeah, she's totally she's just totally their granddaughter. And oh yeah, she she's a seer, she's Finnish, and it, we're just gonna She was just thrown in here so that, you know, you could have it wasn't it wasn't a, a white blonde woman as the main character. That that is what I'm worried about. That she's in here just so a blonde white woman isn't the main character of the game. Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen, what am I supposed to do? I'm running around the town. I'm supposed to come up with a new plan. What do you guys want from me? You see, I've already gotten that evidence. Let's see, in terms of expecting a certain type of game from a game that isn't trying to be like that, like, if, if someone doesn't like stealth games but are playing one and complain, the company shouldn't change it from being a stealth game. Well, it's also a matter of... So, if you are trying to make a stealth game and people who are big fans of stealth games complain or say hey you should um change this or this was annoying or something like that you should listen to the community who are really really big fans of that genre um uh, yeah always listen to okay i was right back here um always listen to the fan base of the games that you are making because that's your audience that's your consumer base. Don't ignore them. It's it's. It, there's nothing worse than when... Okay, I mean, again, uh, going back to... What the... Hey, I already read... Wake isn't the first person the Dark Presence disguised itself as. Oh my as. goodness. In the Rhinelands, the digital decoding regarding the shadow has been discovered. 
both present during the AW report being seeing a woman named Barbara Jagger in Bright Falls at the time. Jagger was a former actress and Bright Falls resident who had migrated from the filmmaker Tom, with the filmmaker Thomas Aim from Finland and was reported to have drowning cauldron lake during redacted AWE in 1970. Research staff have concluded that the Jagger's appearance is likely a case of the shadow manifestation in human form. Research is ongoing as to the nature of the connection between shadow and the psychological signature available to, for it to mimic. Current hypotheses are A. The shadow can only be manifested as an artist or individuals tangentially involved in the creation of art who are operating within a certain physical range of cauldron lake. B. The shadow can manifest as any individual contained definition D within Cauldron Lake Research is active on going C file 3854. Is that the reason why I've been stuck? I just missed interacting with that single piece of paper. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, anyway, yes, um, it is important that you listen to the community who is go you are trying to sell your game to. That is your audience, that is your consumer base. Do not just ignore them. You, it's very important that you listen to him. It's one of the reasons why I'm really, really worried about Insomniac going forward. Because I already had a lot of hangups with Spider-Man 2. But I'm hearing more and more from the creators of Spider-Man 2 Insomniac about doubling down on things I didn't like in the Spider-Man franchise. So, for example, like I complained about the Mary Jane levels in both the original Spider-Man and in Spider-Man 2. Well, apparently there was an interview with the director of Spider-Man 2 and going, I don't care if you didn't like the Mary Jane levels. There were going to be further Mary Jane levels going forward. And I'm like, okay, so you're giving me a reason not to play your game. Or I talked about how I loved Spider-Man 1. I loved the combat. I loved the traversal. I loved the fact that all the side missions and all the extra brick and brack in that game were all involving the combat and the traversals and the moving around and the web swinging and the things I love so much. Then the Miles Morales DLC comes out and there's still web swinging and there's still combat, which I love, but then there are other things in the side missions like find the right sounds for his uh, music that he's going to make and other things like that. It's like, I don't like this. This isn't fun. Uh, this is more like Assassin's Creed busy work to me. Let me just do the combat and the traversal stuff. None of this other stuff. But you have to if you want 100%. And then I play Spider-Man 2. And what's more in the game? Like I said, Mary Jane levels and more of just that random non-combat, non-traversal, just Assassin's Creed Ubisoft busy work from Miles. And now some in Peter Parker's levels as well. And I'm just like, I don't like this. This isn't fun. And now they just apparently had an interview like a day or two or an announcement a day or two from Insomniac who basically said, going forward, Miles Morales is going to be the main character in the Spider-Man games. Like he's going to, to, going to be the, uh, the predominant Spider-Man in the Insomniac Spider-Man series going forward. And I'm like, you what I'm hearing when you tell me that? The game is going to be nothing but all those side missions and extra stuff that I don't enjoy playing in Spider-Man 3. You are actively making the Spider-Man series worse for me as a player and what I'm looking for. And when I and other people like me tell you, tell you, don't do this. This isn't fun. You're saying, put a chick in it, make it lame. <laughs> I mean, you're basically just like, no, we're dumbling down. We're doing the thing that we you say that you hate, and we don't care if you hate it. And now I'm just going to go, okay, I guess I'm just not playing your games. If you are actively telling me you are going to make a game that I will not have a good time playing, that means I'm just going to go out and play a game that I am going to enjoy. Because you are refusing to listen to your audience. Now, on the other side of that, on the flip side, there's probably a large amount of their audience who are saying, yes, keep doing the thing that you're doing. So they have to weigh and guess, like, which audience, what part of their audience do they listen to? Because I'm sure they're getting told different things from different people all the time. So it's not an easy, it's not a black and white issue. It's, it's, it's a tricky thing. It's a balance beam that they're trying to, or a tightrope that they're trying to stay afloat on. But again, um... It sounds like they're losing me as a, as a player and a fan. And they're probably fine with that. So, oh well. <laughs> um, where is Wig Scratcher? There we are.
I need to know what information I can still trust. Uh, FBC files on... Nope. Oh, it, no, go back to it. And now what do I have? Factor fiction? Are these things all ready to go? No, still can't use those. The cult of the tree. Oh my goodness, there's all sorts of stuff here. Okay. Uh, already... <sighs> Uh, cult ritual, what part, who's involved, wait, really? That doesn't, that doesn't count? Uh, cult ritual would have stopped him. Why do they want to kill Wake? That's not right. Well, not becoming a victim, okay, there we are. Um, I had to look at Remedy's official YouTube and couldn't find any videos about Saga being white initially. Was it a preview or a trailer? Um... I couldn't say. I only, only when I googled like Saga. I think I googled like original Saga Anderson from Alan Wake Two, and it showed me like these um, images from. It looked like it was Twitter. So I think it was just like these thirty second uh, clips, or maybe just uh, GIF files of of like teases uh, of what the game of what the what it was coming out. Let's see, I haven't played the newer Spider-Man games, but I want to do a marathon first of the of the other Spider-Man games from either my childhood or that I enjoyed in the years before the newer ones. Hey, some of those original Spider-Man Spider-Man games are, I mean, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, the original PlayStation um, Spider-Man game, which I'm not sure. Do I still have that on my shelf somewhere? I might, or maybe I got rid of it. I don't remember. Um, that one was great. The Spider-Man movie, the Spider-Man 2 movie game was fantastic as well. So, Thanks, Saga. well, wait, the cult of the tree targeted people already corrupted by the Dark Presence. Their goal was to protect the community. Um, is that Mulligan, Thorn? Where am I going? Cult of the Zero. Uh, is it this one? Hmm. No? Is it, is it cult goals? Oh, yes, it was. Deduction available. Deduction available? What's a deduction available? Um. Nope. What color ritual? What is it? Oh. No. Oh, okay, so there's, there's even more. Oh boy. He's never heard of Scratch. Um, who's involved? No. Okay. Cult working with someone? Okay. Uh, all right then. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of that's a lot of string, and all of that's for later. Okay. And then we got profiling, and then Tor. Hi, Tor. Wake told me the clicker would fix this, but Wake was actually Scratch. How can I trust anything he said? The artist must conclude his work. He rides a storm on your piece. Wake up and smell the danger. What about coffee? We told you already, kiddo. What Tom said about the light switch is true. Don't let the story confuse you. You need him to write the ending you want. The clicker can make that ending come true. But we don't have Wake. Everything we knew about the Clicker was true. He wasn't lying. Now, okay then. Um, case board? Am I still... Um, and I can't use any of these, so... Shucks. Let's see. Oh, I found it. In Quantum Break, Saga Anderson is a character that appears somewhere and she was played by... Oh, so she was in Quantum Break. Okay. Well, shoot. So she was actually a more established character than I was even um, led to believe. Well, then, yeah, I guess they... Shoot, I guess they just, just race-swapped Saga Anderson then. Well, it's only a pair. Well, yeah, but that's that's what it. 
That's what they always do. Oh, oh, new dialogue. Okay, cool. Scratch told me the clicker can be used to change the story. Does that match your understanding of this thing? Yeah, the light switch is a paranatural item, maybe even an object of power. We have verified reports that Alan Wake was in possession of it during the AWE here back in 2010. It definitely has power. Are you on speed? Because your eyes are very wide. 